So that's, um, yeah, I'm back, at, you know, obviously. My wrist is a lot better. It's not 100%. It's, it's been interesting. Been interesting to learn about all things, sorts of things about uh, rehab, because I've never broken anything. It's been really mm -hmm. informative about rehab, about the state of physiotherapy. Mm -hmm. Very well-meaning and completely clueless, if you ask me, in a way, in, mm. a, in the wrist department. I can't say anything <laughs> else. <laughs> mm. um, um, what else? Um, uh, yeah. I'm even more kind of completely overwhelmed by life than usual. Um, yeah. and, and dealing with it you know as mindfully as i can muster <laughs> but i uh it's there's uh, it's it's like running two households i'm not even good at running one mm. and so um uh about the sculpture up. is it up mm. the, 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 the what, spider the, the spider oh yeah yeah i thought it was up when you were here was it not no no only the mm. little maquette ah yeah I, i'll find some photographs and send you yes yeah no the spider's been up uh, for a while. When were you here? Uh, January. Jan oh, January, very early. Yeah, very right. early. Ah, yeah, no, no. It was. It went up uh, ooh, March, April, something like that. And uh, it, it's, it came down a bit um, and we had to modify it. Uh, it was only supposed to go up for a couple of months, but it's still there. Um, and I get worried every time we have a big storm. But, uh, but I was over... I was over there yesterday all day and uh, no, it was good. They had a, a naming ceremony for it um, with the local children having to um, have a competition to give it a name. And? I forget what they called it. It's a like spider it. face or something. <laughs> well, it, I don't think it was anything interesting. Go, go spider or something. I don't know. It wasn't, it wasn't terribly um, uh, inspiring, but never mind. They had a good time. Hmm. But yeah, no, that, that, that went well. Um, uh, the the main my our main our main um, news is that uh, Lynn, my wife, who you know, <laughs> um, uh, has had a, a heart operation um, to replace a, a valve, I think. And I think when you were here, Elfie, that she couldn't come out for walks. That I used to go with you, and she wouldn't. She'd stay at home because she was yeah. feeling very breathless. But well, it okay. turns out that, that was because there was a a calcified heart valve um so she had lots of tests and then in august she was due to go in she went to brighton it was due to happen the next day she had the urinary infection um and so we sent home so she couldn't have it and ever since then every couple of weeks we've been expecting to have the operation and it's been cancelled um because of uh, emergencies so it's been very stressful uh but yeah. about uh two or three weeks ago um she had the operation so she's now back at home and uh, yesterday i think it was her first venture out of the house she went down to the post office and to post the christmas cards <laughs> so so uh, uh to get the bus back she can't walk up but uh, hopefully um she'll be on the road to recovery so by next uh, okay, next next spring i guess um we hope that uh, she'll be okay sorry my earpiece <laughs> Oh, that's a big number. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Although they, uh, um, they've, they said that they tried to do it as, as a small as an incision as possible, but it's still, still, still big. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so very. Uh, so it's been, it's been quite difficult for, for everybody, for the whole family, really, because it's been so on and off. Um, but. It went well, um, and uh, so yeah. Hopefully, everything will return to some sort of normality uh, next year. Oh, and we have another grandchild as well. And my Ooh. Phoebe, my daughter, has had a second child, which probably wasn't even you know, in January. No, that wouldn't have even been no, a thing. No, no so, sign yeah. of it then. Oh, well, yeah, so another little boy. So we have another two. little boy. Oh.
Yeah. So that, that, that's quite, that was quite good because that happened about the same time as the operation. So it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's been good. So that's, that's my main, um, been my main focus, to be honest. It's uh, difficult to get, uh, think about too many other things. Uh, Gosh, you must be so relieved, huh? That was a, that was a long wait and a long worry. Mm. It, the difficulty was the expectation because obviously every time she was due to have the operation, she had to um, isolate, self-isolate from everybody. So she, I mean, she couldn't go out much anyway, but she, she couldn't see, well, she wasn't really supposed to see anybody. Um, and uh, then you get to the day before and you get a phone call saying, oh, sorry, you, know, you, can't, you can't do it. So you gear yourself up, but also gear yourself up for the expectations for the disappointment. And, uh, but it's all gone, it's all in the past. It's, uh, done and it went well oh. yeah well that's the main thing is uh, to, <laughs> having having done it and i mean the the, the, the people in the hospital were um, astonishing how they cope with this all the time it's just amazing and, and, and still still smile and still pleasant uh, despite all of the, the the extra traumas that are going through with strikes and and the state of the nhs death generally um so you yeah, know we're, we're remarkably lucky so yeah, yeah. look at that in that from that perspective. You think this is a, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's quite remarkable what uh, people are capable of doing when you, you know, just cut through your sternum, open your rib cage, delve inside, fiddle about, fix you up with a new heart. Well, not completely, but uh, and so you're all back together again. It's amazing. Mm. Mm. It is, isn't it? It is. This is. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I was thinking maybe being, instead of being a sculptor, I should have been a surgeon. It would have been a lot more use. <laughs> yeah. What a waste. And, but I'm not sure how creative you're supposed to be when you get inside and deal with people's insides. So, so. Oh, you have to be very creative all the time because oh. nobody is like the next. So you never you 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 know the principles, and then you find that it is a little different. So you have to always adjust um it to to the given situation so it's more creative than it's you know it's it's a plumbing job like in an old house where yeah. you don't you know you you lift the floorboards and the pipe is not quite where you expected it to be that kind of thing you know? it's not it's not a new build a body <laughs> yeah and no one's given you the plans anyway <laughs> oh well, that's a that's a um, a roller coaster. I mean, you didn't at the time. You didn't say why she didn't come for a walk. It was just, but, but we, I don't know, think we knew. That was a good um, reason. But huh? we didn't. We didn't yeah. know until we just knew yeah. that she couldn't walk back up hills because I? she was feeling yeah. faint. But we didn't know why. Yeah. yeah. And I, it must have been at that time she was going side having the tests. Well, good, and and it was something that could be repaired, uh, which is a, a great mm -hmm. luck. You know, there's there's other conditions that that are harder to fix, and um, even it took a long time. It's done. Absolutely, no, no, oh, well. no. We're very grateful. In fact, she's just gone for a walk in the garden. I can see her. Oh, <laughs> I'll tip I spy on her for you. <laughs> uh, can you see her? She's yeah. Uh, by the greenhouse. Mm -hmm. There we are. Oh. oh, cool. How is your son? How is your son, Gary? Um, it's pretty, pretty good. Is he speaking? Um, yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes. He wasn't talking um, that much. Yeah. He doesn't sit here on the a lot. He certainly wants to talk now, which is, uh, you know, Progress. So yes, it's doing okay. Um, but anyway, I think I'm, I'm really, so, yeah, I think that we have to worry about him for the moment. I mean, she's quite well adjusted. He, he knows how to socialize to some degree. Um, you know, so, you know, yeah, I think he's doing okay for the moment. Um, so, so my focus is really on my other children at the moment. I was a 16-year-old. He just dropped out of um, high school, upper high school, to go to another 
you go to, to homeschooling, it's on a hate school so much you just can't, can't continue there anymore. So I think it's got just as much to do with his obsession with uh, archery. Uh, that's uh, all he does all day is archery. You know? He's just out from morning till, till night, literally, just doing archery. Wow. And is he really good at it? No. Apparently, but you know, it, um, you know, I, I would expect him to, to to be good if he was practicing that much. So you know, um, so yes. So you go and watch. Yeah, you know, when he's but I think you know, he's coming up for a competition. Maybe you know, um, um, maybe I'll go then, but. Uh, you know, things things in the main barometer deals. Uh, so, you know, uh, but, but yeah, if we're not going to be special, I'd certainly you know, go in. And, uh, and, and that's quite, quite possible, but he might join it uh, for a bit for a national day. Who knows? I have an Olympic competitor that we recognize. <laughs> Really in nice. archery, how amazing mm -hmm. to have said, I always fascinated about these early um, uh, uh, um, obsessions, you know, in young people, mm -hmm. because actually it's not that that uh, common. It's a rare thing. And I mm -hmm. always feel very um, precious about them. Because most young people, you know, they just do many things or do what everyone else does or um, they, they they go into A levels and they don't know what they want to do, really. If you ask them what they want to do, they just don't really know. And then there are a few and they only play chess or they only play uh, video games or they only do this or that. You know, they're completely obsessed with something. And I think I'd, I'm always really protective of that because it's rare, it's special, and they might even make it in in that chosen field because to get your ten thousand hours in at a age where it matters, like for big competitions or so, you've got to start ever so early and be and and you've got to be totally obsessed. Otherwise, you don't manage to get the number of hours in to be any good at it. And so it has to be an obsession. And uh, it's always worth a go, I think, to 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 facilitate that if one oh, can. Yeah. And, yeah. and and to really treasure it. And not work against it, or you know, or you should do maths or something, you know, like because or, this is hopeless anyway. If if it's an obsession, they won't. They will only do the one thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As, as I might as well go with it. <laughs> I, yeah. I see. What do you find? One of my friend's son in Malaysia, he grew up and he he just grew up in his darkened bedroom and played video games. 24 7 and he, he got into those there's, there's leagues going mm -hmm. and worldwide competitions and stuff and um he 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 was so obsessive about it. he just wouldn't do anything else and you could hardly get him to school he was not very good at school he didn't he hated it and all he did all night he didn't sleep basically because he had to play the game all night long and um he got quite high in the competition um then he he was he got into a, an American university to be on their official game team, which is you know like you used to play be able to play uh, baseball to do things like that, and now you can also do it playing a video game. So he was there for a while. Uh, then he was a tutor for the, a teacher for the game, made made early quite a lot of money by teaching other people to play this game. And um, and um, then he he lost interest and studied psychology in London. And um, he is now a child psychologist in in um, I think he's in Leicester. He's high flying child psychologist, uh, fledgling. Does that um, is is um, loved by everyone? And will go far in his career. <laughs> and you think, how did you even learn how to speak to people uh, apart from being in the screen? But is it, it, you never know what comes out of it. 
It's really incredible how things go. And um, everyone around him was really worried what would become of him. It, it hasn't held him back one bit. Um, and um, I, it just, I find it so fascinating, the people's life stories, you know, and where it will lead them. And what it, what the, the qualities that it builds up in someone that can be actually applied to a completely different field sometimes that you didn't see coming. So, I mean, he's, he's great. He speaks to the young people in um, Great Ormond Street Hospital, Child Hospital, um, about video games. They love him. It's it's like the, that film, you know, where um, with Robbie Williams, <laughs> where he's the kind of the child psychologist that that makes you laugh. You know, it's it's like a modern version of him. They all love him to bits. Those kids, because he talks their language in a way. Ah. <sighs> So how about archery? <laughs> um, you know, an obsession is an obsession. I know what they are. Um, you know, I mean, when I was his age, I mean, well, actually, even earlier, probably from from you know, twelve until uh, sixteen. You know, my, my life just music. That's Nothing music. That, that's it. Nothing else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know, I just wasn't interested in anything else. I mean. Uh, all my other classes, I, I, I either used to sort of wag, you know, sort of hide out in the music room, or or, or just um, just turn up with a, with a bunch of papers, pretend I'm writing things down, and just throw the paper away. I just complete utter complete disregard of the school, except for for the music course. So you know, I, I know where that obsession comes from. Um, so it doesn't surprise me that he he might have that sort of obsessive focus on, on certain things. Uh, and there's really no, no point in standing in the way. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you've just got to try and accommodate it. And uh, I think so, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But of course, the, the Indonesian teachers here at his Islamic school were not particularly impressed, um, you know, throwing away all these uh, achievements to go to a home school, which you know, everybody knows is complete crap. My homeschooling here is you know, pretty poor, but nonetheless. Oh, is that we couldn't? I couldn't understand that he's going for homeschooling now. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Um, but you know, but whether or not he gets any value out of that, you know, I, I'd be very surprised. Uh, but you know, I, I guess I'm I'm of the view that you know people don't really learn anything unless they teach themselves. So you know, schools may have a certain amount of benefit, but. Uh, for me, well, you know, it was a very limited benefit. Uh, so I think he might be going to sort of, you know, through the same kind of thing. So you just have to let it go, let him run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Archer is, okay. Archer is very interesting. I did it for a while when I was in London. Did you? Oh, okay. And, and I started when we were in Italy, and uh, because my my son was interested, not especially interested, and he was a bit older. But he, so we bought him a, a set, and we had a big garden there, so we set it up. So I started then. But when we were in London, um, they were offering courses to to old people, and one of them was archery. <laughs> that was, was most of it was yoga and the rest of it, but. Um, so I thought, wow, oh, that's great. And it was indoor archery in sports halls. So it was quite a short um, field. And the, the guy who was teaching was, was an incredibly unpleasant man. Uh, it's very strange. He was an ex-policeman and incredibly officious and pompous um, and obsessed with safety rules, which, which was probably a good thing, to be honest. Safety is, is fairly important, uh, but full of self-importance. But the actual... Archery itself was 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 interesting, and at the time that was well, I was you know, involved in you know, meditation and things, and thinking about and reading about the idea of um, the, sort of, the sort of Zen of archery, and that you don't that when you pull back, the moment of release is not a moment. It's not a not a deliberate act. It just happens, 
and, and that never that never happened. You know, I, I was always aware of letting go, but it, I can see how it it can become a a, a meditative exercise. Mm. Uh, but on the other hand, there are results, and I, I, this, this was a bit of a conflict because the result is hitting the target or getting close. So I was I was conflicted in the idea of it being an experience, but an experience with a, a very definite outcome. And I, I always felt that as a as a conflict between experience and outcome. Uh, it would be nice to hit the gold every time, but I, it was it was a rare event. And when you did, you felt good. And you think, well, why am I feeling good? And I feeling good because I've you know, I've succeeded. And what 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 does that mean? What does success mean? And how the way I feel about what's just happened. So I when I when I came here, I brought uh, my uh, setup with me, and I've I've got a massive great net that we used to string up in front of that house because I thought the fair the best thing to do was to shoot down the garden towards the house rather than shoot anywhere any other direction. It would I might kill somebody. Um, but it, and then to shoot down the garden into a target. So I bought all the kit, but I haven't used it really since we used it when we first arrived. Uh, but I haven't set it up since. Maybe I'll make it, but it's, it's an interesting thing. But I, I think you probably do have to become obsessive about it for it to become interesting, really. Oh, Lynn's here. She's uh, my, oh, wow. my, invalid, my invalid wife. Is, uh, <laughs> it's bringing, oh, Lynn, Hello. oh, we just heard about you. Uh, I, oh. I told them about your... Uh, oh. Yeah, well it's done. Nothing. See, well it's nothing. done, it's nothing, <laughs> no. Oh, <laughs> keep healing well. Uh, she's gone, she's got some water. Oh. But yeah, and, and Lynn did archery as well. We, we, uh, it was I should, she didn't enjoy it, but it was so so I know a little bit about a little bit about it and about the what what it what it means. And I and I can see, yeah, it how it's can become obsessive. And really I think unless it's obsessive, it's a bit pointless. Mm -hmm. It's not something that you're it's, it's a difficult thing, I think, for from a recreational perspective. I can't quite see that. I can't yeah. mm -hmm. but I could see if you really think, right, this is it, this is me, and like an extension of what I am. Then I could see that's quite that could be quite invigorating. That could be quite something mm. because it's it involves so little equipment, and that the equipment is so can be considered an extension of of you. It's a, mm. there's very little else involved. I mean, there are mechanical elements, but those mechanical elements are really very, um, very much they're very muscular. Um, you get a lot of feedback from the tension of that, how long you hold your breath and the release. So there's, mm. everything is about an extension of you in a very um, tactile way, rather than it being like if you're on a, on a computer game or something else, there's something else, there's another me mechanism out there. This is very much just you going a little bit further. So it's like, like yoga, really. It's it's, it's um, yeah, or like it, a martial like art, isn't it? That yeah, holding of the energy, like, 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 yeah. like that, mm, where you just really have to ground yourself and, in that way. And yeah. unlike something like Tai Chi, it, it 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 is one movement, and it's the repet re repetition of that single movement, and that that's quite interesting. But like I say, I think unless you obsessive then I, you probably you're not going to go it <laughs> i was thinking well it's interesting but yeah what's what's the point i suppose if you want to you know, get a gold medal or something but uh, well actually actually in, in japan and in java yeah. is very very much part of a meditative tradition is it okay uh, there's a tradition and, and, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, mm. And it's a meditative practice. Oh, yeah. there's, a, there's a Zen practice, archery practice in Japan, and in Java, it's, a, it's among women in particular for some reason. Uh, it's it's very very popular, and my wife included. Um, you know, she she's from Central Java. Um, oh, okay. And so, is he there? Is he in Java? No. No, no, he's in no. Bali. They're okay. All, they're, they're in Bali now. Uh, so, but even in Bali, there's plenty of, you know, in Balinese culture, it's the same, you know, archery is sort of a 
kind of a meditative practice. Mm-hmm. Um, hitting the target is, you know, you know, it's nice when you do, but that's really not the point of the, of the thing. Mm-hmm. The point is, you know, releasing the arrow. And I think in, in, in the Japanese uh, uh, tradition, archery tradition, or, or, you know, it's, uh, they're actually judged. There is, they, 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 I do recall you know, judging taking place, but it's not whether you're hitting the target. It, it's got to do with the confirmation of how you're actually letting go of, 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 of that arrow. So it's very much a, an aesthetic. Um, an aesthetic uh, thing, yeah. Mm. Uh, trust the Japanese for the aesthetics. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh, hey. So there's, there will be a national team and there will be competitions oh, in yeah. that way oh, yes. that, that he could mm. get into. Yeah. Actually, the same goes for Bhutan, which is a, you know, another a Buddhist, a Buddhist uh, country. Mm. You know, archery there too is the same. I mean, they do have targets and things like that, but there's also a, a meditative part of it as well. Um, so you know, th- 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 there seems to be a solid tradition of you know, archery being part of a meditative art um, associated with, with, you know, with, with Buddhism mainly, I guess. Um, that, that's probably how it came to Java, I think. Mm. What's his name? Who's that? Uh, your son. Oh, Orama. Orama. Mm-hmm. It, it, it was it's actually, actually, actually all my kids' names are a little bit odd, but uh, Rama is a very common um, name in, in, in Indonesia. Uh, but he's actually called Ra- Ramadin. And so, okay, he's got my last name, but if you say it fast enough, it, it makes Ramadan in, in, the, in the way that Indonesian would say it. And because he was born uh, just at the beginning of Ramadan, he became Ramadin, Ramadin. And that's, that's a very true. common thing for, for Indonesians to do. <laughs> Rama also, me- also means friendly. Of course, it's also refer- it also refers to the, to the in the Hindu God. Uh, nice. Actually, that there is. Uh, did, did you happen to look at those uh, that playlist of videos that I bootlegged from that course that uh, I did? I started. <laughs> okay. I I, I, I got I, lecture I, number I, one inside me. <laughs> okay. I didn't, yeah, not the introductory course. I missed that somehow. I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. How about you, Rupert? No, I, 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 I missed that, I'm afraid. Hmm. It actually wasn't too bad. Or I said two thirds of it wasn't too bad. Um, and uh, you know, I'm very precise in that number. Uh, that there were three speakers, um, and two of them were, were, were extremely good, in my view, in, in terms of you know, my, my perspective as a secular Dharmist. Uh, but the other one was from the uh, from a, a Buddhist group, and uh, and so and, and you know, this this was a, a run by a, a Buddhist group, so you know it, it, you know it wasn't trying to be anything other than a, than a Buddhist um, um, seminar, uh, except that you know um, Winton and and Stephen were basically just talking about secular dharma, you know, secularized dharma. Uh, but the other third was just basically still trapped in that uh, that, that brusty world. Um, and, you know, that, that, that sort of it was actually it was supposed to be Winton and Stephen's last um, time they were going to give a seminar. So basically, he's saying they're, they're both saying they're retiring. Okay. Um, yeah, you so, said that in the in the text. Mm, yeah. So yes, yeah, so, so it was just interesting to set, to see what they had to say on there. Sort of basically the last hurrah yeah and uh, yeah. and to do that within a, a very very buddhisty setting um no, and uh but yeah you know it was, it was very well run and all that um i just got rather reactive when sort of having to go back to all that uh, uh buddhist nonsense so and, and, that, and that sort of a moral superiority you know, of, of uh i don't know that the newly converted vegans so um uh, yeah, it's just a bit of a strange world. 